that time of the year again and it is one of my favorites probably mm, spring is probably his favorite so second most favorite time of the year and that's autumn autumn is such a cool time of the year but why i also love it so much is it allows me to spend so much time outside especially in pine forests because it means mushroom season and wild mushroom season I absolutely love wild mushrooms you have them fresh but you also dehydrate them and they give you two completely different flavor profiles I also absolutely love spending time in pine forests pine trees have a lot of significance for me and if you have seen any of my videos you might have seen a little sneak peek of the pine tree tattoo on my forearm so I definitely put a lot of significance on pine trees but what's happening is all over the world especially here in South Africa as well there's a lot of marketing happening around the sale of wild mushroom workshops foraging mushroom foraging workshops so the whole concept of mushroom foraging is becoming huge and that's okay because mushrooms are so abundant and if you have some experience mushroom foraging you're probably ending up in the mountain in your own spots in any case so what this is all leading to and that's the point of this video is yes I am out on a forage because it is autumn we've just had a lot of rain for a couple of weeks the temperatures have dropped the humidity is up which means it's perfect timing for mushrooms but it is very early in the season so I'm not sure if we're gonna get any but even if we don't the point and as I say that there's a mushroom right there but I can see it's not an edible one <laughs> and that brings me on to my first point going on a mushroom foraging workshop is one thing picking mushrooms to eat them is a whole different ball game because you literally pick the wrong one and you can die they are there are some very very toxic and poisonous ones Let's switch hands and then there are some obviously some edible ones but there are also some not so toxic ones that if you were to eat them you'll get stomach cramps and things like that so that's the first point I want to make with the, the whole forage mushroom foraging movement is all of the experts all of the workshops you will go on will highly emphasize the fact that you never eat a mushroom that you're not 100% certain of or that you can identify what that means for me I have created a rule for myself that I will only eat bolites or mushrooms in the bolete family and um, pine rings there are so many other ones but there are so many other ones where there's two that look identical but if you can't tell the difference between the shape of the spots on top one is deadly one is one of the most delicious mushrooms you'll ever eat and I'm not interested in that kind of risk so for me I only go with bolites and pine rings personal preference you might have a lot more experience and you might be able to enjoy a lot more of the culinary world of mushrooms there are also two other things that I want to talk to you about which is often not spoken about in these foraging workshops and if you see my eyes wandering I'm just busy looking for mushrooms as we're busy chatting and that is the whole concept of where you're going to be as you can see I am literally in the middle of a plantation there's no one around me so what that means is I am inherently vulnerable vulnerable to people to animals to a whole bunch of things and what that means is I need to just be prepared and I need to not seem vulnerable so what does that look like well for me that looks like 
Let me just get up this little hill and I'll tell you. It looks like two things. It is first and foremost pepper spray. That's not focusing. I will never ever go foraging without pepper spray and a good pepper spray. A jet that can do three to five meters, a nice powerful can. Pepper spray is going to potentially save your life. Whether it's from another human trying to just take stuff that belongs to you or probably a more likely case at least here in the garden route an animal of sorts you don't want to find yourself in a mountain isolated and you are face to face with an animal that could do some damage so please if you go mushroom foraging in the mountains always have jet pepper spray with you then the other thing is a knife I'll always have a knife with me and I'm not talking the mushroom foraging knives, the small little things. I'm talking a proper, proper hunting knife that can, if you absolutely have to use it, it is very sharp. It is something that can be used to save your own life and protect you if you absolutely have to. But as with all things <coughs> self-defense and vulnerability, you never want to get yourself into that position in the first place. So if you are remote, be alert. Always know what's happening around you. Listen. If you see people in front of you, suss them out. If they look dodgy, turn around, walk away the other direction. Pass people wide. Don't go too close to them. Just be smart. Don't be stupid because to quite often when you're looking for mushrooms it's early in the morning so to avoid vulnerability just be smart and if you follow those things of only eating what you know you can eat carrying pepper spray always having a knife on you you're gonna need a knife in any case to clean up the mushrooms that you pick then you'll be much better off and those are some of the tips that are often not spoken about when you do mushroom foraging. There's a lot of focus on obviously the edibility part of it, which you can pick, what you can't. But the two other things that are often not mentioned, which I really think should become part of every mushroom foraging workshop hosts information is always carry pepper spray always have a decent knife not just a mushroom cleaning knife and then you need to make this call of trying to never go alone I'm okay um, I know I'm okay on my own um, but I'm also not going to take any chances if you're a woman I would highly suggest not going on your own go in a group of at least three just to make sure that you you are safe um, and then also tell people where you're going because if you are going to be remote you're going to be in the mountains you slip you fall <laughs> you don't want no one to know where you are so don't share your gps location with other foragers because then they'll come and steal all your mushrooms <laughs> but tell your loved ones the people near you where you are so that if they need to they can come and find you Okay, yay! Found some. Well, I found one for now. But where there's one, there's many. This, to me, is looking like a bleep. Yes, it is. Um, like I said, I am no expert. But I know this is a bleep because it has a spongy bottom. If they have spongy bottoms like this, it's a bleep and this whole thing is edible. It's not a slippery jack, although it does actually have, it's probably, a, yeah, it's got a slimy texture. So this is a slippery jack, completely edible. I personally don't like eating slippery jacks fresh because they are a little bit slimy. I am a big fan of dehydrating these. They go pitch, pitch black once they're dehydrated and they have this the most amazing licorice scent and smell so I like to 
dehydrate slippery jacks slippery jills they called a few things all over the world but here we go first mushroom yay So we found our first mushroom, which is awesome. Carry on looking. The other thing you need to do when you are mushroom foraging is you need to make sure that you have a phone. I would most certainly not take your latest, greatest, smartest smartphone. Take an old one, take a, a cheap one that just has buttons, not a flat screen thing that can fall and crack and all of that. So have something with a SIM card that you can just dial out if you need to. But don't, like I said, don't be silly. Don't take your smart fancy stuff. So if you are confronted, if you are mugged or whatever the case may be, you're not losing prized possessions. I'm walking in the forest with my camera, which is a stupid thing to do, but it's part of the sacrifices we need to make to be able to bring you the content and the information you need to also stay safe and make smart decisions. So I'm okay with that. It's a calculated risk, but don't do silly things like carrying around nice camera equipment. Cool, let's carry on foraging and see what we can find. So remember that rule I had of I only eat certain mushrooms, one being a belete, one being a pine ring, climb into this hole of a fallen tree. There's one at the bottom here, which is quite often you find them. And it's a little white one like this, but focus, there we go. See the gills? That's my rule. Anything with gills like this one, I just don't think it's worth it. Now, the exception to that is the pine ring, because the pine ring has got gills, but it's a turmeric color, it's beautiful orange, it bleeds orange. So there's certain telltale signs that they are edible. And here's another one over here. And that is most certainly a slippery jack. See, it's got that, see it's got that little slimy cap on the top. That means it's a slippery jack. Another one to go into the dehydrator. I stumbled across an amazing little group of pine rings. These are the ones I've been looking for because these are super tasty and really meaty, which works really well for a risotto. If you don't know what you're looking for in pine rings or any other mushrooms, don't do it. Do a course, do what you need to to get educated. These are also commonly referred to as saffron caps, saffron milk caps. They widely spread all over the world in pine forests. So I am now stoked. And what will happen is all the beliefs that I managed to pick, those I'm going to use for dehydrating because they add a really, really good flavor to any kind of vegetable or stock that you need as dried mushrooms. So beliefs, dried, pine rings are going to go straight into the risotto. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed some of these tips. I hope you get to forage some epic mushrooms this winter. And stay safe, be smart, and don't make stupid decisions. Until next time, happy foraging! <laughs>